at Project 314 React here, and today we're looking at another NVIDIA demo. This one's Grass, released on June 1st, 2000, which features 10,000 individual blades of grass and a multi-pass cloud system. It also has a weather manipulation system to see how these objects react in real time. This was released for the GeForce 256 series of graphics cards. So right at the turn of the millennium, really classic stuff. Let's dive into it. Of course, we have the classic README here, the NVIDIA Grass demo made by Simon Green, August 2000 is that? Even though it said it was June 2000 when it was released. Maybe that's a mistake. It's got procedurally generated grass, anisotropic lighting model, multi-pass procedural texture clouds, procedural lens flare, infinite non-repeating terrain based on noise functions. That's really cool. Anisotropic texture filtering, view frost from culling, dynamic level of detail, high depth complexity, fill rate intensive, and 10,000 potentially visible blades of grass. We've also got the controls here. Fly, with the left mouse button, right mouse button, fly backwards, middle or left shift mouse button, look around, left and middle or left and control, move the sun around. That's interesting. R is reset position, W is toggle wireframe, toggle storm mode with space, turbo mode with V, switch the sky text with X, toggle anisotropic texture filtering with A, toggle the sun flare with S, toggle cloud shadows with O, sky with K, increase wind, decrease wind with plus and minus, brackets are increase and decrease grass width and the whatever these ones are called are increase grass length and shorten grass length then you've got the colon the semicolon which increase grass tip width and decrease grass tip width and of course uh, escape to quit out so i've just grabbed a screenshot of this and i'll have it on my phone for reference this one's got a little less configuration to it unlike last week's lizard demo which had lots and lots of configuration lots and lots of things to look at this one's much simpler it just has the audio files and it has the texture files here that you can look at there's not much more config than that other than these batch files and what i've made is an extra batch file to launch it in 1920 by 1080 you very simply do that just by changing the resolution here and it's got the bit depth and the refresh rate so what i may try and do is put this refresh rate up to 144 because that's the refresh rate of my laptop let's see how this runs all righty well it works It's uh, running at 144. That's amazing. A demo from 25 years ago actually supports higher refresh rates. Look at that. Oh, that looks great. So you can see here you got the NVIDIA logo, nice and shiny. Kind of like the chrome effect from Half-Life. I think that's just a very basic texture lookup, not like a cube map or anything like that. It's really old school stuff. That's really cool. And if you hold the left mouse button, it will zoom forward. And right mouse button, it will go backwards. Middle click and look around. Look at that. Look at the sky going over. Reset the position so you can start back here because it's infinitely generated. So if you just turn back around, can you make it back to the logo? Or does it just go into infinite generation and you can't get back to the logo? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Let's take a look at the water shading. Just a very basic water texture there moving over. Nothing special. This has such a weird turn of the millennium computer vibe to it. Like abstract and kind of spooky in a way. But also peaceful. So if you leave it for a bit, it just goes into automatic camera mode like this. Let's uh, put turbo mode on. You have to kind of hold V down. It goes into turbo mode. Oh, that's so cool. It's kind of early sort of Minecraft tech, I guess, as well. Or Minecraft-related tech, infinite terrain generation. Obviously not as advanced. You can switch the sky texture with X. Oh, now we're in, like, Zen or something. Now we're on Mars or Hell or something. And then back to the blue sky. Let's just put on storm mode where the wind goes up. And it gets darker. Look at that. Also affects the speed of the water here as well. Different cloud shadows going over as well. That's really cool. I'm guessing that's just like a basic texture going over it. It's really quite effective, especially for 25 years ago. You can toggle anisotropic filtering. 
with A, but you don't really notice that too much because you can't see too far ahead with the textures because of all this fog. So you might slightly see it. Oh yeah, you can slightly see it get like a little bit blurrier here. Yeah, as it's doing like trilinear or bilinear. So that's with anisotropic footing on, and that's with it off. Very subtle. So if we can look at the sun. Sun flare. Oh, it completely gets rid of the sun. Okay. Oh, is the cloud shadows? Okay, so they're by default off. Okay, that's interesting. Except in storm mode where they switch on automatically. Look at that though. That's really nice. Affecting the ground and the grass. Turn the sky completely off. Just have a endless grey fog void. Kind of freaky. And turn the sun off as well. Looks like an infinite purgatory of uh, endless grass. This looks really good for the time. Look at these textures, they're not bad. Guessing it's not using too much VRAM really because it's just repeating the same texture over and over and over again. Increase the wind. Which again affects everything. The grass blades, the sky, and the water speed here as well. The clouds, everything. You can dial it right back down to basically zero. Just gives you a little bit of a clearer look at the distant land. You can change the grass width. Ah, oh, there you go. So you can actually see the distant textures a little bit more now. But anisotropic filtering on or off still has a very subtle effect. So that's with the thinnest grass. And that's with the thickest grass. Wow. It's still getting thicker. Oh my god. Is there a limit on this? That is insane. I think that's possibly a bug that they didn't put a limit on that because that is bonkers. Just makes it look like a jungle. I'm trying to get it back down to normal size. There we go. Increase the grass length. Oh, there we go. So I think it's already at its max. Oh, so you can completely get rid of it. There you go. Now you're just down to the, the ground. And even then, the anisotropic furring on or off still makes very little difference. If you were to see beyond the fog, then you'd be able to see a lot more. The difference in the textures as it goes through the mip mapping. So the grass length is a little bit more within reason. It doesn't quite go so nuts as the grass thickness. Increase the grass tip width. Ooh, it just looks like loads of bananas. So that goes pretty crazy as well. Increasing the tip width. And then you can also increase the overall width. And just create this endless forest of polygons. This is bizarre. Let's put storm mode on. Look at that. This is really smooth in 144 hertz as well. And it has, of course, not dropped a single bit in terms of frame rate. Looks like some basic vertex shading on the grass there. Some, like, slight shine. That's pretty sweet. Of course, you go to wireframe. You can really see everything that's going on. I'd love to run this on real hardware. Because this is quite intense for a GeForce 256 and I guess a Pentium 3 at max. There you go, I'll just reset it. Turn off storm mode. This is great. Again, this is the kind of thing where it'd be great to see this redone with like modern technology, RTX or something. So you can also move the sun around. Left and control, move sun. So the sun can be moved around. But controlling it is quite difficult because the camera moves as well yeah left control and left mouse or control and the middle mouse yeah you don't have much control of where you can actually move it you can just move it a tiny little bit you can sort of drag it around drag and drop it a little bit oh i think these are uh, these old demos have some bugs to them because <laughs> the sun has now disappeared let's reset there we go so you can drag and yeah you have to drag it around Let's uh, make sure we have shadows on. See if we can drag the sun around a bit. Okay, that doesn't make too much difference. I think it's a fairly basic lighting model. 
So that might just be purely cosmetic, having the sun move around. In fact, when we get rid of the sun completely, yeah, it makes no difference to the lighting. So the lighting is just purely these guessing generated shadow maps going over, and then the shading on the grass, but no extra lighting to speak of. Look at that. Just nothing physically accurate about it whatsoever, not reflecting anything, <laughs> even pretending to reflect anything. It's just a generic lookup that moves completely wrongly compared to the camera and the environment. Because yeah, I'm guessing it's just a flat texture that it looks up and then renders to these blocks here. Whereas a cube map would have like six faces. So you could sample out that way, that way, that way, that way, that way, and get actual different faces of it rather than just one texture lookup. Again, it's just so 2000. It's so Half-Life. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit. Let the auto camera take over. That's so cool. Be really good as a screensaver. Just need to get a GeForce 256 to see how it ran on it. And see how hot it would get the card back then. Turbo mode. The constant waving back and forth of the camera. Yeah, it could possibly make you feel a little bit ill, but there you go. I'm guessing this was written just by one person in NVIDIA, which gives it such charm. It's kind of like TL Water as well, which we looked at a few months ago. Oh, it's so good. The kind of stuff that would just fascinate me when I was younger, and even now. But back then I'd be wondering, how is this working? With absolutely no idea about APIs, graphics cards, hardware, operating systems. I was just fascinated with it. Let's have a look through the textures here. So you've got the Daisy TGA, the Grass TGA, the Ground TGA, the Help, the Logo, Road. Ah, okay, it's a sphere map, not a cube map. That's the reflection in the NVIDIA logo. Just like the bubble demo that we looked at a few weeks ago, where you can choose between the cube map or the sphere map. So yeah, it's just like literally a single texture lookup. So funny how it's a road, and there's like no road whatsoever, it's just ground and grass. I'm guessing they just had a random picture, and they just shoved it into a sphere map. Here's the water effect, so that's the texture that just moves across. I'm guessing they just move the texture coordinates uh, across the surface to make that move, or seem like it's moving across. Here's the ground texture. It's quite a nice texture for the uh, year 2000. Of course you've got the grass texture as well, which just must be dynamically stretched across the polygonal grass. Then you've got the daisy texture, which actually looks like a photo. Yeah, I think it is. That's why it looks so good. Nice. And yeah, that's it. There's no shader code to look at or anything like that. It would have been, what, DirectX 7, I guess? So probably even before shaders, it's probably all fixed function. And yeah, it's pretty much all procedural. So all the shadow mapping is all procedural, or however those shadows are being created. Yeah, procedural texture clouds, procedural lens flare. Yeah, because the clouds don't have a texture file, so they are just procedurally generated with that noise function. Non-repeating terrain, again, with the noise function. I wonder if they'll ever release the uh, source code for these. Really cool to look at. What fascinates me is the anisotropic lighting model. I'm going to Google that. So I think it's a very, very early way of giving directional grain to lighting. That surfaces have a directional grain made from facets that are formed with directional bias, like grooves formed by sanding or machining. These surfaces demonstrate anisotropic lighting. So it's the little grooves in the grass that are being simulated with the lighting reflecting from them. Back in 2000, that's pretty cool. That's kind of an example of that sort of uh, thing here, which looks like it's being done possibly with a bump map or even a normal map yeah texture for that anisotropy normal map the grass demo doesn't have that so it must just be dynamically using the grass texture to do that anisotropic lighting that's interesting wish there was a way to turn that culling off and turn the fog off so you could see even further into the distance because you could render really far out nowadays with the dynamically generated terrain but back then you'd run into limits of polygons and ram and uh, it would probably crash pretty quickly on old hardware but nowadays you could go uh, probably kilometers out of dynamically generated terrain as long as you weren't limited by the old api in some way now, interestingly there's some information on gpu gems here on nvidia's website which i'll link in the description that goes over a code creatures benchmark which i really want to check out if it's downloadable and it has a flexible widely applicable grass simulation which has also complex water and sky dome simulation this is 2002 so two years after grass but it kind of shows an evolution of that and it goes over the technology involved with it the textures the objects the animation and even the vertex shader this is kind of the evolution of the grass demo 
as if the grass stem was like a prototype that led on to this kind of thing. And then you go even further ahead to DirectX 11 with turf effects, which enables massive grass simulations of the physical interaction. So that's like the crisis kind of interaction where you can move through the grass and bend the grass as your character goes through it. 100 triangles per blade using a continuous level of detail. Natural shading with correct shadows from individual blades of grass as well as self shadows. So this is uh, way more advanced and is part of NVIDIA Gameworks. So you can kind of see the level of detail here how physics uh, can interact with the grass and move the grass around i think this is the tech they had in wildlands back in 2017 ghost recon wildlands we could flatten the grass as you walked over it so again it's very conceptually similar to the grass demo but way 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 more advanced and nowadays with nanite and lumen and all the physics tech that we have now I mean, this was, what, 10 years ago, this tech? Maybe slightly less, but nowadays you could have really photo real, physically accurate grass simulation. So it shows how far it's come over a quarter of a century. But I just kind of love the idea that the, the grass demo is like the prototype of that, the, uh, the very seed idea. And yeah, here we are back in the demo flying through the endlessly generated terrain and grass. So it's just a quick little video today looking at that. I love looking at these old NVIDIA demos. They're so fascinating. The Lizard demo last week was great. And it shows how the graphics were flying forward back in the time because this was just a year before the Lizard demo. And the Lizard demo just looks way more advanced with only a year of uh, technological advancement from the 256 to the GeForce 3. I hope you enjoyed another bit of nostalgia there. Leave a like if you like that. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Subscribe. There's a new video every week on tech and video games. I hope everyone's staying safe. And I will see you in the next video.